So here's the challenge. Can we light a night scene and a day scene without using any electricity sockets? That way we'd have some lighting setups we could use in the middle of nowhere, even if we don't have access to power. So for this first one, let's say we're filming a night scene where someone is camping. Typically there would be two kinds of light, and the first is moonlight. So to simulate that, I'm using these LEDs that are powered by cheap off-brand NPF batteries, so we can use them away from electricity. If we set up the lights in the front of our scene, then the light looks kind of fake. It's as if the camera has a light sitting on top of it, which kind of breaks the illusion. So when filming at night, it's pretty common to have the light coming from the back of the scene, so it doesn't draw so much attention to itself. Now, battery-powered lights typically aren't that powerful, so we've got to use some tricks if we want to illuminate this fairly large space. For example, one of the basic principles of lighting is that the closer it gets to a surface, the less space it will cover. So to light a larger space, we just need to move the light further away. Of course, if we put it too far away, it won't be bright enough, so we've got to find the right balance. Now, outside, the light covers quite a small space if it's low down and pointed towards the ground. But if we extend the light stand up and tilt the light upwards a bit, it covers a much larger area. And that's how I got this result that gives us a more even spread of backlight on these bushes. Next, I added a second light coming from the side, but this one dimmed down to 35% because it's just there to fill in the shadows rather than being our main light source. Now, this is still pretty dark overall. Most people would add light, especially if there was a dialogue scene where we need to actually see face expressions clearly. But for a wide shot like this, I would probably just leave it dark and see if we can use some practical light instead. We could give our character a phone with a flash on it, which is just a classic excuse to show the audience what's going on. Or if we need to see their face, why not give them a lantern? This is just a typical battery powered camping lantern and it gives us just about enough light. Following that, we could put it inside the tent, which is just another reason to justify there being light. So we can see that the light is coming from the lantern, but if that's too contrasty, we could still bring in one of the LEDs and bounce it off the tent walls to fill in the shadows a little bit, depending on what kind of look you're going for. And while we're here, we may as well try that wide shot again. Now the lantern isn't bright enough to shine through the tent, but if we use that LED that's already inside the tent, we can turn up the brightness a little bit and that can fake the look of a lantern that's illuminating the whole tent. Could be a nice establishing shot for the start of the scene. Now for our last night shot, let's really avoid electricity. Starting with a bucket of water as a safety precaution, we can then wrap some fabric around a stick. Now we could dip it in some slow burning fuel if you've got some, or a bit of lighter fluid like I did. Now we have a beautiful warm key light that flickers and lights up everything around it. You can see why it's become a cliche in adventure movies. So next, let's try a daylight shot. And this one actually started with a YouTube comment. I asked Matt Workman whether he could design any lighting setups for a small location instead of a large studio where you can just put the lights anywhere. And before I knew it, he had made a whole video and was challenging me to shoot his virtual lighting setup. Let's take a look. Here we are in an eight by 10 foot room with eight foot ceilings. We've got one window, we've got a desk, we've got a bed right there, and we've got some shelves right there. I think I've met the requirements. So we need to find a window that faces the side of a bed with a white wall next to it. I'll have to use this room. Let's clear it out and bring in a camp bed with a mattress on top so it's a better height. Now, this is what the natural light looks like from the window. It's not bad, but it's pretty flat. The light is all coming from the front. So in the video, Matt basically suggested that we grab an HMI and set it up outside the window so the light comes through the window, bounces off that white wall, and keys our character. Okay, so there's already a bit of a problem. HMIs are expensive. So here's my workaround. I still want to keep things battery powered, so I'm using these V-mount batteries that Indie Pro Tools sent me for this video. So I still don't need to use any electricity sockets. I'm using a much cheaper and less powerful light, so it'll need to be much closer than in Matt's design. But we do need to find a way to get the light up to that upstairs window. This C-stand is the tallest bit of kit that I've got, so I precariously attach the light to the arm and then put it on top of this woodshed for a bit of extra height. I had sandbags at the ready so I could secure it as soon as possible, knowing that otherwise a bit of wind could knock this top heavy rig right over. 
With the sandbags on, I tested it and found it to be secure, but on a professional set, I probably wouldn't risk it. I'd just rent a taller stand rather than doing something as precarious as this. Either way, we have managed to set up a light without taking up any of that really valuable space inside that small location. Now, my version didn't work out quite as well as Matt's, but it certainly got me thinking about this kind of different approach where we show direct sunlight in the frame while using it to bounce light onto our characters. Matt talks about seeing it in Law and Order, and it's true, I've started seeing it all over the place. Breaking Bad uses it a lot to make their house seem really dark even when it's sunny. But the fun thing about hard light like this is that you can quite easily start with bright sun through the window in the morning light and just by closing down the aperture on the lens and cooling off the white balance in camera, it suddenly looks like a night scene. Now, throughout this video, there's been one type of lighting we haven't really talked about. Even though it's completely free and portable and doesn't require any electricity from us, and that, of course, is the sun. But I've done a whole nother video all about using sunlight in filmmaking, so there's a link to that in the description. But anyway, I guess there are two main things I've taken away from this challenge. First is that although we all like soft light, we shouldn't forget about hard light and hard shadows, especially for bounce sunlight or night scenes. But secondly, it's reminded me just how important it is to work with limitations. By setting the challenge of lighting in a small room or only with battery powered lights, it really forces us to think outside of the box and come up with tricks and workarounds that we might end up using even when the limitations are taken away. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week.